Hey guys, for shoot of Team Bad Yugi's here, and welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! Club. I've got another January 14 format profile here, and this one being, of course, one of the other major powerhouses of the format, Mermail. Now, uh, this is based off of Josh Smith's list. In fact, it is Josh Smith's list. Even though here in the, t even though here in the U.S., we didn't have the same rulings on, um, what was his name, Abyss Turge, discarding Gun, getting it back. Gun would get her um, summon in Europe, but she wouldn't get it here. I don't care. I'm still playing two Turge. Deal with it. Because um, I want to respect the list here. We're playing three Teus, one Megalo, one lead, and one title for the sevens. Um, one Megalo really is all you need. You don't need any more than that. We have three Pike and two Turge for the fours. Again, the, the the Turge for the grind game mattered so much. It really did. It really did. And then, of course, we have three Lindy. We have three Gund. That's, it's German. If you want to call it the Josh Smith gun, sure, go for it. And then we also have, boom, get wrecked. One Osha. He would very often side this out going uh, second. But going first, it does have definitely some great plays for setting up for um, good a good equipped engineer board against Fire Fist, which is very nice. And then for the Atlanteans, we have two Marksmen and one Dragoons. Um, just like him, we're not playing the one heavy infantry, because with this being the only way to really search it, you just wouldn't get it that often. Well, the only good way to search it. So, um... Instead of like opening that card up when we don't really want it in our hand, we just drop it entirely, focus on the ones that always are good. Because resolving these is always good. Um, and of course, two Aqua Spirit to finish off the monster lineup, allowing for some really, really cool levier plays and extra pushes for Exiton and 101 and stuff. And for the spells, we have three MST and three Patrick Hobans. Now, if you guys are a little bit confused by this, um, I guess I'll talk about it now. Um, this was called, I, I adoringly call this Hoban format, because this is the format when, um, when not only Patrick Hoban was, you know, on the top of everyone's, like, list, but this was a format that just focused a lot on the players in general. People were really starting to get an idea of the players and the characters that were around. You'd have Bass, Lolly, Josh Smith, um, Denny Yu, Joe Bogley, Brandon Wigley, especially as the format went on, we went to Hat, and we had, like, Noah Green and, um... Other players like that, and Zahabi, of course, with the Infernities. Oh my gosh, eventually making it to winning worlds. What a great guy. But I call it because of uh, the Hobans, and the fact that every deck and their mother played Upstar Goblin, because people just were on that consistency wave. And this is the format where it really started to be happening. This is the format where it became apparent. So, like, every deck that could afford to would play Triple Upstart and then even Triple Reckless if they could. Because it was just that good. Anyways, moving on. Two breakthrough skills. One torrential and one warning. Screw dweller. Screw exiton. Breakthrough skill. <laughs> Need it. Um, and finally we have one squall. And then three sphere to finish it off. Then for the extra. We have one Gaius. One big eye. Two draco sack. Because title is a card. Um, just like him, I agree, you don't need one Gaius, you don't need a second one, because there were so many traps that existed very often, um, you would only use it when you knew he was gonna stick, no other times. So, by making him too much, you were, like, relying on him, and you just get punished for it. Whereas making cards like Draco Sack, or like, even if he's Phoenix Chained, he still tribute himself, get a pop. Anyways, one Bahamut Shark for the two Trites, of course. One 101. And two Dwellers, because all of these, remember, do trigger Atlantean Dragoons when you detach them. Sometimes that happens, and usually when you do, you win. Uh, one Exiton, one Lavable Chain for pitching title. Or, um, if it lives long enough, just like you said, pitch breakthrough skill. It really is that important to shut down Dweller. And then one Cowboy. And for the rank threes, Levier for the rank four plays, funny enough. Uh, Engineer for that first turn play against Fire Fist and just grind game in general, fantastic. And then the monsters we never actually summon on their own. Three trites. Tokens for Draco Sack. But there you go. There's the profile. This is Josh Smith's uh, Mermails. Um, he topped multiple times, multiple YCS from this exact same format. And he just, like, this is like when he just started tearing it up. He was, he was going crazy this year with Yu-Gi-Oh! 
a lot of players were. And just a very good format. But hey, enough of me rambling here. This is uh, Fushida of Team Bad Yugi's. Thank you for watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! Club video here. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that usual, all that usual jazz. Make sure to check the descriptions for um, any good resources, links to other duels, other decks, um, other other formats. Absolutely. Have a good day. Resolve Exiton for game.